All right. So our last speaker uh, will be up in just a moment. Before uh, he comes up, a couple uh, quick announcements. On this stage at 1230 will be the BDC pitch event. So again, a couple minutes after we finish our last presentation, the BDC pitch event will happen right here. That's first. The second thing is, uh, just so you guys know, Terrasse Bon Secours, uh, the terrace, uh, the restaurant is open as well. It's just behind us. Great food, really good, nice patio. So you guys can check that out. The next uh, session of the talks in the afternoon will start at 1.40, and they'll happen on the stages just above us right here. You guys saw those yesterday. That starts at 1.40. And then finally, the closing remarks will happen at 4.30 p.m. in the lounge, which is kind of that little area back over there. And we'll be announcing the winners of all the prizes at that point. So that's your schedule for the afternoon. Uh, finally, our last speaker is Mark Bruneau, who's the founder and president of VeloSense Strategy. And he'll be talking about three things. What the hell does intangible mean? Building scalable businesses that sell air and service startups wins and sins. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Mark. Um, I realize I'm between you and lunch, so uh, I'll, I'll be brief and crisp and hopefully funny. Uh, let's see. Right. So these are the three things I want to talk about briefly. Um, I've seen yesterday, especially dozens of business plans for some applications that I don't, I couldn't describe what they do, but the, the pitcher seemed very um, motivated and you know, interested. But what it, whether it was for a product or a, um, an application, all of those entrepreneurs, all of you, are ultimately involved in selling services, selling solutions, selling intangibles. So let's talk about what intangibles mean. Um, generally products you can, when you're selling to, so what do I do? I sell $10 million consulting engagements to CEOs. And to do that, you can't have them touch and feel and um, appreciate what they're buying. You have to listen and help and use dynamic language and be concise to describe and help them visualize an outcome, a journey with you. Can I stand this person? Will I enjoy the journey? And will he take me somewhere helpful? So if you can sell intangibles, if you can sell a dream, you can sell anything, is basically what I want to tell you today. And you, you use that active listening and incisive language, using language to shape ideas, using language to create an agenda for an executive. Using language and listening to express better and more incisively what has been bothering that executive for maybe 10 years. And you know you're there when they say, damn, you're gonna make me sound good. You've expressed more crisply and more incisively my issue than I have in 10 years of being in that issue. So what does um, active listening mean? I'm going to skip to number two on this side over here. You want to sell more? Stop talking. And I don't know how many consulting partners I've taught in other firms or hired myself that want to talk to the executive, to the CEO. They get that all day from their internal people. They zone out they don't distinguish one paragraph from the other. You want to make a difference? You want to have an impact? Shut the fuck up and listen. They'll tell you what the problem is if you just let them. I'm going to skip to the quote at the bottom. Uh, Michelangelo famously said, I did not sculpt the David. I removed excess stone to release the David. And that's what you're trying to do with uh, executives, CEOs, prospects learn their business, invest in understanding them, go in with hypotheses and provocative questions, and then zip it and listen. That's a powerful technique. Um, on the next page is a couple of interesting quotes that, that really we should remember. You don't sell intangibles by talking about a consulting project, how tiresome is that, but by demonstrating what it will feel like to work together. Skip to the bottom. When your work speaks for itself, don't interrupt. Let the work speak for itself. Um, 
why are CEOs a different audience to sell to? Most CEOs are lonely, desperately lonely. And they get talked at by their internal executives all day with varnished or fraudulent depictions of what's going on inside their company in the pursuit of that title of that function, and I deal exclusively with Fortune 500 CEOs, they've lost family, friends, a personal life. And so understand that loneliness, understand their quest for truth and empathy and friendship. What does a friend do? Mark, you're balding and you're fat, pull yourself together. Uh, that's not fun to hear. And it was truer before than now. But uh, you got to tell them the unvarnished truth. You got to earn the legitimacy and the credibility to talk that way through problems you've helped solve or incisive listening. If you can do that, they'll keep you around for a long time because generally they have very few friends. Building a scale services business that can reach scale. First, the leverage model. In the early stage of consulting, you have a, a guru, I would never call myself that, but a really smart person that sells projects and then has to deliver on them. Not scalable, and you'll die of fatigue. Uh, as you mature as a consulting firm, and by the way, consulting firm, I built a $75 million one with very high margins that I sold for more than one time's revenue. This can be a very significant uh, wealth creating, asset developing uh, activity, uh, perhaps more than any other kind of entrepreneurship uh, that you might get involved in because there are very few fixed costs. But because of that, the people ride up and down the elevator every day. Um, so here's a ratio to remember, finders, the people who talk to executives, listen, infer, and paraphrase and summarize as they're listening to nail the issue in less than five words. Minders that will extract the best out of teams of consultants, and then the very best, smartest people that you can overwork and overpay, the grinders, it's not pejorative, that will do the analytics and will do the work. Um, productize. You can only reach scale, and by scale I mean you can have multiple rainmakers. They're hard to manage. They're prima donnas. Sometimes they don't make it rain, and yet they cost half a million to a million each. So that's an expensive rainmaking uh, system when it doesn't work. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Um, you need to be able to productize and product market these, uh, the learnings of projects. You need to focus on an industry, in my case it was telecom, but it can be on a function or a domain or an industry subsector. But one way to not succeed is to be a generalist consultant. That never works. If you can uh, succeed at productizing and making replicatable your methodologies, then your cost goes down. Your geographic expandability goes up. And the client value proposition remains high. Clients don't want to see me all the time. And who could blame them? They want um, to have value and have the senior person touch base with them periodically. Oh, here we go. Oh, I hate these build slides. OK. How do you uh, become a sales generating machine of concepts and air and intangibles to CEOs, get published, pick a topic, nail it, be the authority, get referred, ask for referrals. For a few executives whose lives my consulting firm has literally helped change, they'll give you referrals, but not too many because they want to keep you for themselves. I've had the same client in some cases for 15 years. Be the authority on something. Don't be um, articulate and conversational in a million topics, pick one or two domains or industries and nail it. Be connected, engage in social networking, work in the community so it's not all about uh, money. Serve, so I got two more slides. Uh, uh, it is a virtue to end early, so I'm about to. 
After Harvard Business School in 1986, I'm that old, uh, I joined Mercer Management Consulting, and after five years of grinding away, I had leapt from associate to senior associate. Just 15 more steps to partner. So I thought that was a bit slow, and so I thought I could do it faster, sell better than the partners around me. And so in the middle of a, the worst recession, 1991, most of you were getting born then, um, I started my own firm, me and a box of business cards. In five years, we reached 10 million in revenue. In 10 years, we reached 60 million in revenue. It's very hard to sell a professional services firm. I was able to for about one and a quarter times revenue, and that was a wonderful thing. Now I'm, I'm trying to do it again with the VeloCent. Last page, last uh, set of thoughts. Uh, how to do this right, keep costs as variable as possible. Start with very high caliber part-time stringers in their home offices. You don't need a big brass sign. Don't overcommit to fixed costs with people and rent and office leases. You don't need that at the beginning. Have a clear value proposition, well-defined industry or domain expertise. G my best-selling line for years was, we're not generalists. We're not generalists, we focus. Um, scope projects narrowly and precisely and over-deliver on that scope. Don't promise all kinds of stuff. You never get rewarded or thanked or appreciated or paid for uh, working beyond scope, so be defined and stick to that knitting. In terms of managing people, set achievably stretched goals for uh, partners and revenue uh, generators with very clearly defined, narrowly defined charters for them to work in in a sub-industry or a domain. Commission them well. Um, hire staff slowly. Hire slowly, fire quickly. What does that mean? Um, Hire slowly. Test for work ethic. It's a very hard grinding business consulting. Test for their ability to have that work ethic and their fit with their colleagues. Um, fire quickly means if they're not getting it, if they're not cutting it, you're, you're not going to retread those old tires. Move on. Hire the best. Pay what it takes. Pay what it takes. Hire the best. They will serve you well. And in case of uh, merger and acquisition activity, like I was able to do, um, offer to your people generous retention bonuses. So on the day that I sold Adventus, my former firm, I created six multimillionaires. Uh, where are they now, the ungrateful? No, and uh, we still work together, so you gotta spread it around. I wanna close by saying, whether or not you're in the ideas strategy consulting business, you are in the services business, and to succeed, go forth and listen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I got it. Dave McClure and some of the audience.